Hi, I'm Eric Siegel, and today we're going to be checking out the Mini Survival Tin from Polymath Products. Polymath is a company that's based in the UK, and they sell a lot of different survival type gear. They actually have a larger survival kit that's much better equipped than this one. But today we're going to be checking out the Mini Survival Tin, and in a future video, we'll check out the much larger kit. Now, as you can see, this is not very large. It's about the size of an Altoids tin. So clearly, you're not going to be living in the lap of luxury with this survival kit. But for its size, it's actually pretty good. And in a dangerous life or death dire survival type situation, it could make a difference. But of course, the effectiveness of any survival kit is going to depend on the environment that you're in. You know, if you're in some sort of freezing cold Arctic wasteland or the Sahara Desert, where you may not have access to shelter and you don't have access to a source of food or water, obviously you're going to be in trouble and something like this is probably not going to help very much. So whatever kit you have, it needs to be appropriate for the environment that you're in. Now I live in the Southeast United States, so something like this is probably going to be okay. If I lived in the North Pole or in the desert, obviously I would need a much more advanced survival kit. In my mind, there are really three levels of survival kits. You know, there are four survival kit cores, fire, food, water, and shelter. And a level one kit like this is usually going to give you access to three of the four items. So with this kit, you get the ability to make fire, the ability to catch some food, i.e. fish, and the ability to purify some water for drinking. You're not going to get any shelter. And of course, they're not going to provide the food and water for you because the kit's too small. Now, in a level two kit, you add the fourth element, shelter. So a level two kit will usually have, at the very least, a space blanket or something like that, or maybe an emergency bivy or an emergency tent, something to give you some basic shelter in addition to the ability to make fire and the ability to catch some food and purify some water. And then a level three kit, well, that's where you're going to actually have some food and water in the kit. And those are going to be larger kits, more, you know, emergency preparedness kits that are going to be larger and heavier, have some emergency rations and some emergency water and so forth. But of course, they're larger and they weigh more. And so they're not always as convenient to have on hand. And so that's where little kits like this come in. Now, as for me, you know, I don't view this as a primary means of survival. I mean, if you're stuck in the wilderness and this is all you have, shame on you because you should be more prepared than that. I look on these little kits as backup survival gear. So for example, when I go camping, I have my pack that has all of my main gear in it, my primary gear that helps me survive and have fun in the woods. But if for some reason that gear were to fail or get lost or stolen or something like that, I like to have one of these little kits on hand just as an emergency backup so that no matter what, I've got access to fire, the potential to catch some food, and the ability to purify some water. And again, if you have a level two kit, you've got the ability to get some emergency shelter going and stuff like that. But anyway, what we're gonna do is go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. So it comes in this little baggie. And when you pull it out, There's the tin, and it looks almost just like an Altoids tin. And then here's the contents card. So the kit contents, we've got the outer bag and foil, so you do want to keep that. We've got the tin itself, instruction sheet, and then the fishing tin, which contains items 5 through 12 on the list. 8 meters of fishing line, 6 pound test, a glow stick, a worm lure, and a maggot lure. Two fishing hooks, size 10, a brass eye, split shot, two number fours and two BBs, two safety pins, and two swivels, size 10. Then we've got a meter of 550 paracord, which is pretty good, fire starter and a whistle unit, liquid filled compass, a candle, a compressed towel, micro LED flashlight, water carrier, 20 centimeters fabric surgical tape, alcohol swab, eight water purification tablets, a sewing needle and thread, and a signal mirror with protective film. All right, so let's go ahead and open up the tin. And of course, we're greeted by the Survival Tips brochure. And again, I'm not going to read all of this stuff for you, but, you know, it's just your basic survival tips that you find in most survival kits, along with a list of the kit contents. 
Then we've got a candle right here. Pretty good sized candle. And then we've got the compressed towel. And the way these work is that you get them wet with a little bit of water and they expand out into a pretty good sized towel. I'm not sure how big this one is, but it's probably like a hand towel, something like that. So not bad. Then we've got this little tin that contains the fishing kit as well as some other stuff too. So let's see what's in here. And these little tins, by the way, are really nice. I bought a pack of these on Amazon a while back. And for my EDC kit, stuff like that, I use these. You can put pills in them, all sorts of fun stuff. Anyway, so we've got some fishing line, six pound test. Then we've got a miniature glow stick. And you crack these and they light up and they glow for a few hours. Then there's a little maggot lure, a rubber maggot lure. There's a rubber worm lure. Then we've got the four sinkers. There's two small sinkers and two large ones. There they are. Then we've got two hooks. There they are. And two swivels. And there they are and two safety pins. And then we've got this eye thing that you can screw in. Now, I wasn't sure what this was for at first, but I think, if I had to guess, this is to make some sort of a rudimentary fishing pole. You could get a stick and screw this into the stick and then put the fishing line onto here, and then you've got yourself a rudimentary fishing pole. So that's actually pretty cool. I'm glad they put that in there. So that is what's in the fishing tin. Most of it's fishing gear, but we do have the safety pin, the safety pins and the glow stick. Pretty cool. All right, up next, we've got a condom. And for the uninitiated, this may seem rather silly. It's not for sex. This is for storing water. Yeah, condoms actually make a pretty good water storage device. And if you look in a lot of military survival kits, they'll have condoms in there because that's exactly what they're for, is storing water. And believe it or not, you can actually boil water in a condom. If you hold the condom full of water above the fire, not so close that it's going to melt the condom, but close enough where it will gradually warm the water, you can eventually boil water in the condom and have good drinking water that way. So this is actually a good thing to have in a kit. Obviously, you don't want a condom that has any sort of lubricant or spermicide on it. You just want a basic dry latex condom like this one. Then we've got some paracord, and there's that 550 paracord. And again, there was one meter of it, so not bad. Then we've got our fire tool and whistle. So this is kind of cool. It's got the ferro rod right here built into the side and then you pull this part out and that's the striker so see if we can get this going there we go there we go now we're throwing some good sparks pretty cool and that just snaps back in the end like that and then there's a whistle on the other end and actually, it's a pretty darn good whistle, I have to say. This could really get someone's attention. Not bad at all. All right, then we've got the LED flashlight right here. See, it says Polymath Products on one side. And it's actually pretty bright, I have to say. It may not look bright on the video, but for its size, it's pretty good. And you can actually, you can depress it like that for momentary action, or there's a switch here and it'll stay on permanently. So, for its size, this is actually a pretty good little LED flashlight, I have to say. It's not gonna win any awards for brightness, but it's pretty good. Then we've got this little kit in here. And this contains several items, so let's go ahead and open it up. All 
All right, so in the middle here, we've got our eight water purification tablets. And each tablet will treat one liter of water, it looks like. So we could treat eight liters of water. That's not bad at all. Of course, you want to read the instructions before you use them, just to make sure. Then we've got... This is some medical tape. So you peel off the backside and you've got some medical tape going on. It's pretty cool. And then we've got some first aid pre-injection swabs. Basically just alcohol swabs. Alright. And then down here in the bottom we've got our sewing kit. In case you need to do any emergency sewing. It's got a needle, another safety pin, several colors of thread, and two buttons. Not bad. And then we've got our compass, just a little button compass. And I can see that it is accurate. It is pointing in the right direction. And then finally, in the very bottom, we've got a signal mirror that was listed in the contents. And it's got a protective film on it, which is nice. You can see me in the reflection there. And what you do is you peel off the protective film, and then you've got yourself a good signal mirror. And then lastly, there's the tin, of course, which you could use in an emergency situation. You could boil some water or cook some food with it. Always good to have one of these. Now, I've been thinking about it some more, and because we have the fire starting tool here, I think that the compact towel, I don't think that's there to get wet and actually use as a towel. I think this is meant to be used as fire tinder. So you would puff this out a little bit and then set it on fire with the ferro rod and striker. So just to review, here's the entire contents of the kit. We've got the survival tips brochure, the medical tape, the tin itself, water purification tabs, an alcohol swab, We've got the fishing tin that also has a glow stick and two safety pins inside. We've got the contents card, one meter of 550 paracord, the button compass, the LED flashlight, a sewing kit, the bag the kit came in that has a foil lining, the signal mirror, a candle, a condom that's used to store water, the compact towel that I believe is to be used as tinder, and you would like that with the ferro rod and striker, and this tool also has a whistle on board. All right, so now I'm gonna repack the kit, but as always, I'm gonna to try to augment it and improve it just to leave it a little better than I found it. So I'm gonna to try to add this little mini med kit that has two ibuprofens, a Benadryl, an Imodium, and a low-dose aspirin, just in case someone has a heart attack. Hey, you never know. And then I'm also gonna to try to add a single Band-Aid and a scalpel blade. So let's see if we can do it. Okay, got it all in there. And I'll just slide it back in the bag. contents card as well. And there we go. So there you have it. This is the mini survival tin from Polymath Products. It's small. It's not the best survival kit on the planet. Obviously, its effectiveness is going to be determined by the environment that you're in and the specific conditions that you're in. But for its size, it's actually not that bad, and I like it. Good quality components, really nothing to complain about. So that's it for now. I'm Eric Siegel, and I'll see you next time.